West Park Rehab Physical Therapy has been a provider of PT services for 21 years in Venango County. We have 10 licensed therapists with over 120 years of collective experience. In addition to traditional physical therapy services, many of our therapists have achieved expertise and certifications in areas of specialty like hand therapy, women's health, cardiopulmonary reconditioning, Parkinson's, and yoga. This dedication to excellence has led West Park Rehab to expand its scope of services to include diagnostics. And this is possible as a result of our affiliation with a nationally recognized diagnostic franchise called Hands-On Diagnostics. This organization provides the formal education to take a doctoral trained physical therapist through a nationally accredited fellowship program to become a registered musculoskeletal ultrasonographer. This program has oversight by a medical advisory board, including physicians, educators, and researchers. So the use of musculoskeletal diagnostic ultrasound for orthopedic conditions is not completely new. However, to have a physical therapist who already has expertise in anatomy and function to perform and interpret these scans is new. And we are proud to bring these services to Venango County to help improve and expedite diagnosing musculoskeletal impairments. This testing does not replace the MRI. However, it can be an excellent adjunct and precursor to assist with decision-making that may lead to either a conservative physical therapy approach or an orthopedic consultation. Additionally, we have seen time and time again where the results of the musculoskeletal ultrasound can be used to help expedite approval through the insurance company for an MRI. So I'm hoping that you will give us just a couple more minutes of your time so that we can demonstrate exactly how we perform a musculoskeletal ultrasound, the information that we can derive from it, and how we can use that information to collaboratively manage orthopedic patients. Although we can accurately scan many structures in the lower and upper extremity, for this demonstration, we are going to focus entirely on the shoulder. Now, if you're not familiar with these scans, let me explain that we will be looking at structures in a cross-sectional view, as well as a longitudinal view. Additionally, we can look at these structures dynamically. And now we're going to begin with the scan of the shoulder joint. I'm Beth Carr, and I'm a physical therapist at West Park Rehab. I am the musculoskeletal ultrasound fellow. We are going to begin with a scan of the shoulder. And the first view we're going to look at is the long head of the biceps in the short axis view or the transverse plane. So here we have the long head of the biceps tendon sitting inside the interturbicular groove of the humeral head. So what we're looking for in a normal view is the contour of the humeral head to make sure that there's no irregularities that the tendon is sitting directly centralized inside that groove, that the ligaments are over top of the tendon, and that the tendon is nice and bright and what we would call hyperechoic so that there's no deformities. So this is an example of tenosynovitis where we have the black area around the tendon which shows a collection of fluid that is surrounding that tendon. When looking for tendinosis, you would see an enlarged tendon as compared to the contralateral side. When beginning to look for subluxation of the tendon, you would first see the tendon sitting towards the side or above the groove when looking at the still picture on the ultrasound. However, this can also be seen dynamically when we move the arm. This is an example of how we can test dynamically for subluxation of the long head of the biceps, which is difficult to complete with an MRI as you cannot move during that test. 
We are now going to look at the same structure in the long axis view. Okay, so you can now see the long head of the biceps tendon as it courses down along across the humerus, which is right here. Next, we're going to take a look at the supraspinatus tendon, which is an oblique long axis view. In the normal view of the supraspinatus, you see the nice contour of the humerus. You can also see this nice thin black line, which denotes the articular cartilage. You will see a bright white tendon with good fibular pattern, which means there's nice lines that are here. And then a thin line above it represents the bursa. There are multiple types of tears that can happen in the supraspinatus tendon. One of those such tears is an articular sided tear, which happens on the side of the humeral head. So you will see a blackened area within the tendon on the side of the humeral head. Additionally, there can be a tear on the bursal side, which would then be called a partial thickness bursal side tear. A tear that occurs in the middle of the tendon and does not go through to either side is considered an intrasubstance tear. These tears are unable to be seen by an MRI. Complete full thickness tears can also be seen, which show a larger area of disruption in the tendon. These are almost always a referral to an orthopedic for a consultation. Any defects that we see on the long axis, we then confirm in the short axis or transverse plane. We again look for the humeral head, that articular cartilage, and then the tendon view where we look for that nice hyperechoic signal and the fibular lines of the tendon to make sure there are no focal defects. So dynamically, we can look for impingement by watching the supraspinatus glide underneath the acromion process. So here we have the acromion, and here's the supraspinatus. And as she lifts her arm, we can watch that supraspinatus slide underneath. If impingement would occur, we would see the supraspinatus bunch up before it slides underneath. Additionally, when we find a defect, we can also use the color Doppler to look if there is neovascularization to the area to show that there is healing or inflammation that is happening. These are just a couple of the structures we are able to scan. We are also able to look at the infraspinatus, the teres minor, the acromioclavicular joint, the sternum, the coracoacromial and the coracohumeral ligaments, as well as the pectoralis. Thank you for taking time out of your day to watch this video.